Hello there, my name is Brandon and I make pictures out of tiny squares. And in this video I'm going to be making some pixel art that's inspired by the art style of the ZX Spectrum, which is a home computer system from the 1980s that had a really unique looking suite of games. The camp size that I'm using for this work is 256 by 192 pixels, um, which is of course the resolution used for that system. And I've also enabled an 8x8 pixel grid overlay since that's the tile structure used as well. For me, one of the really charming things about the ZX Spectrum is the limited color palette that it uses, which is composed of a total of 15 colors, with seven of those being sort of the same color presented at two different levels of brightness. When I was searching for an accurate source for these color values, uh, the first place I actually looked was on low spec, uh, which is one of the go-to places to find pixel art palettes. And lo and behold, it was posted up on there, and it was posted by our good friend Polydux, no less. Uh, you guys may recognize Polydux from some of the text mode and the one-bit videos that I've done before. And he's really been quite a reliable source of low color count palettes, uh, particularly ones that are related to older hardware and displays and stuff like that. Now, you can probably see what's shaping up already, but I'm doing a racing game style mock-up. So I've got the car in place, and the next step is to kind of frame the road and then create a backdrop in the distance. For the overall vibe here, I was particularly inspired by this game called Chase HQ, uh, which I thought had a really great perspective and look for the cars, uh, kind of like this lower fidelity outrun in a sense. And then of course there's a nice large HUD that's displaying the score and everything down there, so I'm kind of doing my own take on some of that layout. Uh, in fact, the actual playable area that I've allocated to my mock-up is uh, 208 by 128 pixels. Uh, meaning that I've left a ton of room uh, both on the bottom and on the right hand side because I wanted to do kind of just like a ridiculous amount of HUD details to display all sorts of extra things. For now I'm working my way through this skyline backdrop and I slowly started to explore how I'm going to add color into everything. I wanted a futuristic look that had a bit of a glitchy effect to it in a sense. And one of the first things I tried to do was uh, to drop in some shading with the darker teal and then in other spots, I dot in some bright accent colors along the features of the buildings. I wasn't putting a ton of thought into it at this point, uh, more just trying to play around and see what sticks. And eventually I started to feel like it was going a little bit in the wrong direction, uh, but I, I didn't know exactly what the right direction should be. So I kind of retreated and stripped back a lot of those color applications and I just left it a bit bare for the time being. And I wanted to wait and see how the rest of the piece would come together and then kind of reassess after that. In the meantime, I got to work on the HUD design, and I had a pretty clear idea in mind of this being composed of just singular bright colors against the black background. So I approached it almost like one-bit art in that sense, uh, with things being very simplistic and high contrast. And it's giving this effect of being like a glowing dashboard too, so that's pretty cool. As I mentioned before, I wanted to go overboard on the amount of details here, so it's filled with all sorts of small buttons and gadgets and different readouts and stuff. Uh, I'm not anticipating that they'd all have some informative function in-game, but they're at least offering just a little bit more context and uh, obviously some eye candy on top of that at the very least. Now up at the top, I wanted to do a player portrait uh, just to give some identity to the person who's in that car. Uh, but I just kind of jumped into this one thinking I'd kind of make it up along the way, which usually isn't a great strategy. Uh, so I'm kind of struggling here to find the best way just to get a foothold on the portrait. And I ended up doing this uh, sort of three-quarter profile view structure. And without meaning it to, it kind of came out kind of fun and cartoony. So I just kept going along with that and sort of spun it into this like slightly punk rock aesthetic, uh, which weirdly that sort of freed me and kind of helped me solidify my thoughts for the ways that I could use color in this piece. So essentially to start, I've got this black line work over a yellow background. And to give this more character, I'm gonna replace entire eight by eight sections of the yellow tiling with other bright colors. Now, the easiest way that I found to do this was to have the line work on a layer above the background and then just substitute solid colors according to the grid. So you can see if I flick that line work off, there's just a grid of different colors underneath it. And then having the line work over top, um, I don't know, it's not like a masterpiece or anything, but I think it's a cool effect of just having this sort of patchwork of color sitting under everything. So with this renewed, reinvigorated sense of a stylistic direction, uh, I of course went back to the cityscape artwork and gave that the same application by dropping in these solid patches of color behind that line work. Uh, when you look at the art of ZX Spectrum games, they do adhere to a limitation like this of only using two colors per eight by eight tile, 
Uh, so I've basically taken the long way around to come to that same conclusion. Uh, but nevertheless, I was glad to see uh, something start to come together like this. And I continued mixing things up here by replacing parts of the black line work with other colors. So it's still fulfilling that two color limit per tile, but on the whole you end up with a lot more variety and a lot more vibrance. The final thing I want to do is add a small amount of animation just to give a bit more life to everything. So primarily that'll involve making the car appear as if it's moving. And I've done this by creating a series of differently scaled lamp posts that are going to move along the road on every frame. We can see they follow that angle that the road is set to, and every frame that sprite gets just a little bit larger each time, uh, making its way into the foreground. On top of that, I've added lines that scroll along the road, and then added a slight bobbing motion to the hover car too. I've added other simple animations to the HUD and the background and stuff, but let's just jump ahead and look at everything together. So without further ado, here's my ZX Spectrum style futuristic cyberpunk racer. All right, well, honestly, this turned out to be such a fun exercise uh, to the point where I can tell that I'm going to have to work this style into my regular rotation from now on. Um, but for now, we'll, of course, close out with some CRT time. I'm really curious how it's going to look on there. So thank you for watching and take care and keep it square. <laughs>